when we are when we are out from church, how many of us blame somebody else for what going on in our life? You know, if they hadn't said that, it wouldn't. Have, or I wouldn't have went off if they wouldn't have said it. I wouldn't have did what I did if they wouldn't have did what they did to me first. But are we able to say it's because of me? Are, are we able to look in, into ourselves internally and say, you know what? When it all boils down to it, I had a choice. I had a choice to say, no, oh, I, I, I got my temper in control. I ain't gonna say nothing. I don't have to break up everything in the, in the house. I don't have to let my mouth go off and say things that I'm gonna have to be, But it's because of me. And, and, and this passage here, you know what it's saying? Everything in this passage, it's saying it's because of me. We're going we're gonna to look at something from the book of Isaiah. I love my Old Testament prophets. Amen. And uh, Isaiah is a, is a unique individual. He was the first, uh, what we call our first major prophet. And Isaiah was one that, that started out on a, a rough spot and, and it got better and better, but Isaiah was one that spoke what he, he believes and, and you, could, you could resonate with what Isaiah said. And the book of, the book of Isaiah is, is sometimes called a miniature Bible because it has 66 chapters just like we have 66 books. And there's no book in the Bible that, in the Old Testament that talks about the gospel and Jesus Christ and his coming like the book of Isaiah. But you got to understand that Isaiah came out in a, in a, in a, a, unique, a unique way. It says in uh, chapter 6, it says, in the year that King Uzziah died, he said, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, sitting on his throne, and his train filled the temple. And Isaiah described it with angels around him, saying, holy, holy, holy is our Lord God. And then Isaiah said, he, he said, woe unto me, for I am undone. I'm a man of unclean lips. And I live among people with unclean lips. Isaiah testified, he said that a seraphim took a live coal in his hand off the altar with tongues and put it on his lips and said, thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sins have been purged. The next verse tells us that this, and I'm, I'm kind of paraphrasing. He says, then the Lord said, who shall I send, and who will go for us? Isaiah volunteered and said, here am I. Send me. How many of us have have come in contact with God and said, here am I, send me. We fail to do that because we don't know where God going to send us. We fail to do it because we don't know what he's going to go through. We don't live long enough to know that when God decides to send us somewhere, it might not be a comfortable place. So we don't volunteer. But we say we love the Lord. We have to question that. But everything that God did, he did it for us. And I, I, I'm, I'm going to read, a, I'm a, read a, a few scriptures for you from the, from the 53rd chapter of Isaiah. It says, who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we shall desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression, and he was bruised for our iniquity. 
and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Those, those, those verses are very familiar to anybody that's been in church a, a, few, a, a little while. It, it, it's, it's a powerful scripture. But when you, go, when you think about the scripture, you see that first verse? He says, who shall believe our report? And to whom is the, Lord, is the arm of the Lord revealed? Now, you know Isaiah's name means that the Lord saves. That's what his name means. But when he starts with this verse, you think about all that Isaiah did. Now, this was in the sixth chapter, he, gave his, he, he started his, his ministry or, or, or his prophecy. Some say he started before, but his prophecy started when he, when he was purged and cleansed. And 47 chapters later, he says, who shall believe our report? Isaiah's a prophet and, said, and, and he's saying, we're going to testify what God gave us. We're going to tell you what God said, but who's going to believe it? Yes, who's going to believe what we tell them that the Lord said? And then he says, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? This is the foundation of the whole book, the foundation of the whole Bible. Because if you don't believe it, you don't have nothing. Yes, Isaiah steps out and says, who shall believe our report? He takes it from himself and he puts it upon us. What he's doing is saying, I'm going to give you a choice. I'm going to let you choose what you're going to believe. Yes, now, when we, when, we, when we study our Bible, we think about who wouldn't believe? You, you know that song we sing all the time? I seen it with my own eyes. That's not saying you believe. It's saying you was a witness. You testifying about something you saw, but it's not necessarily that you believe it. Let, 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 let's, let's look at this. The subject is because of me. How many, how many of us are willing to admit that the circumstance that you're in is because of you. Because of me. Now, now we, we, we in church now. We can, we can you know, we're we going we gonna to keep it in church. But when we're we out from church, how many of us blame somebody else for what's going on in our life? You know, if they hadn't said that, it wouldn't have, I, or I wouldn't have went off if they wouldn't have said it. I wouldn't have did what I did if they wouldn't have did what they did to me first. But are we able to say it's because of me? Are, are we able to look in, into ourselves internally and say, you know what? When it all boils down to it, I had a choice. I had a choice to say, no, oh, I, I, I got my temper in control. I ain't going to say nothing. I don't have to break up everything in the, in the house. I don't have to let my mouth go off and say all things that I'm going to have to be. But it's because of me. And, and, and this passage here, you know what it's saying? Everything in this passage is saying it's because of me. And when, you, when, when I start to examine and look through, God said, yeah, it was, it was because of you that all these things happened. He went to the cross because of you. He died because of you. And he gave you eternal life Will you accept it. That's your choice. Let, 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 let's look at this. When you think about the, the, the Bible, let's look, uh, look at Genesis. We're going to go to Genesis 2, 16 and 17. If we hear a prophet say something, we will believe it. Look at, look at what it says. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat freely. Then he goes on, he said, But the tree... But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now, God talked to Adam. He spoke to him. Did he believe the report? God walked in the garden. He talked with Adam. They, they met. Now, God told this to him. Did he believe it? 
Did, did, did he believe God? No. Because if he had believed him, he wouldn't have ate. We, we can go back and look at the story and say, well, he saw nothing happen to Eve when she ate and this and that. But I gave you a command. I gave you a message. Not, not from me, but for, God gave him a message from himself. Adam looked at that message and said, hmm, I don't believe it. The bottom line, what, what, why, why, why he got kicked out? It wasn't because of Eve. It was because of him. Did Adam say that, in what scripture you can find Adam say, hmm, it's because of me. We don't like to take the blame when we don't believe the report. We, we, he, he told him plain. I'll give, I give you another. Look at uh, Genesis 19, verse 17. Let's, let's read that. Look, let's, let's read that. Look what he said. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad. He said, escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay, stay thou in all, in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. Who y'all think he was talking to? Lot. He was telling Lot and his wife. Let's go to verse 26. But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. Did she believe the report? For some reason, something in us as, as, as Hebrews, we, we, we got to push the envelope. We got to push it a little bit past where it needs to go. We, for, it's something in us that says, I just got to go beyond what I said, what he said for me to do or not to do. That sin nature in us, it makes it come up. When you think about it, and I, I didn't give him a scripture, what about Noah? Noah preached for 120 years. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. After, look like after 100 years, they say, they say, it ain't rained yet. 110 years, 150, 119, 119, 364. It's going to rain. They didn't believe. But when it started raining, the old songwriter said they knocked on the windows and they knocked on the door. But no, I can't open the door because God got the key. God said, it, it's something about us that when a prophet tells us something, the Bible, we got a Bible right here. The message, that's what he said. Who will believe our report? How many things God have said to us as individuals and we don't believe it? He tells us this. He said, uh, the Bible gives us information how to, re how to rear our children. And social studies have been, been made and said, you shouldn't correct a child with, with the rod like the Bible says. Put him in a corner and tell him to count to 10. Put him in time out. Set him down and, and, and reason with him. And they'll be better. And look, the jail's full. We, 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 got, we, got, we got teenagers, little young kids killing and shooting each other. But we follow society. But what, our, what the, the report was, we ignore the report. Not, not only that, not only that, but uh, uh, what about in our marriage? Do we follow the report? We know, we, we know what we say when we got married. Uh, Till death do us part. Oh, I'm 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 a lover. What what the Bible tell us? Love your wife like God loved the church. Love your husband like it, it was the Lord. Not today. They made me mad. They upset at me. You don't you don't understand this? Is, why don't we believe the report? Why don't we believe when when he says you it's stronger with two? Why don't we, 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 you know, why don't we come in? The Bible says, come, God said, come let us reason together. But we won't reason with each other. We, we're not, we're not going to reason it's going to be my way or the highway. This, this, that's it. I, I, I'm the man, I'm putting my foot down, and that's what it's going to be. And, 
and it's messed up, but that, that's okay. We're just going to struggle through it. <laughs> we hear the word. We read the report. But we ignore it until trouble comes. Yes, and still we're not able to see it's because of me. It's because of me. The Bible tells us, it, it, let, let me give you some good ones. I don't want to leave you with just the negative, just the negative, just the negative. Malachi 3 and 10. Pastor been teaching about uh, uh, tithing and, and giving. Into Malachi 3 and 10. How many of us know Malachi 3 and 10? Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there might be meat in my house. And prove me now wherewith, said the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts said this. Okay. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to see, receive. Why don't we believe that? Amen. That's a good one, huh? Yes, you, you come out ahead on that one. Uh, 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 do, do you believe the report where, 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 when David did the Psalms? Psalm 23, we, all, we, we know that. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. How many of us walk around in want? But do you believe the report? He said, he's making me to lie down in green. Well, oh, I, don't, I don't believe that. I, 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 don't, I, can't, I can't see it right now. What about Psalm 27 and 1? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? He tells that, that when my enemies came home, they stumble and fail. Do we believe that? He's given a report. A report is just a message from God. And the message from God tells us what is good and what is best for us, but we don't receive it because we don't believe. We saved? How did we get saved? By believing. But the question is, what did you believe? Did you believe what Christ said, or did you just recite what somebody told you to say? If you believe, where's the action? Yeah. Yes, sir. The second part of that, that, that same verse, that, that foundation verse, because if you don't believe, you, you, you can't get to the end and say, oh, I'm going to take the healing, I'm going to take the deliverance, I'm going to take, because you didn't believe from the beginning. Look what he says. He says, and the arm of the Lord, the arm of the Lord. What is the arm of the Lord? One Commentary say the, the, that phrase, the arm of the Lord, is God's power in action. God's power in action. Now, 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 how, how, do, how does that look? Power, power. We know if, if you had a, a, a stick of dynamite, nobody, yo, don't put your head, if you got it, don't. <laughs> but it, it, just let's imagine. How powerful is that dynamite? It's just a stick with a, with a little stem on it. You flip it up in there, catch it. it, it it's no big deal. It's not until you light it and release what? What's on the inside, the power. Let's, let's look in the Bible. Where, where, where did God show his, 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 his power for those who believe? Think about Daniel. Since we, we all know the story of Daniel and the lion's in, right? Daniel believed God. Daniel wouldn't stop praying because he was praying to a God with power. Even though then he wasn't seeing God's power, what? In action, he believed it. Daniel, if you pray, we're going to throw you in the lion's den. I'm going to keep praying. Daniel prayed. They threw him in the lines, then guess what? The power of God came into action. But it didn't come into action until what? He believed. And when he believed, guess what? He stepped out on what he believed. That might be our problem. We believe, but our feet is in super glue. I, I believe the Lord gonna make a way, we'll step out. Or he, uh, can you come a little closer, Lord? We, we, we never make any effort. We don't make, we don't make no effort. Uh, uh, financial. Financial trouble come. Oh, 
I better go get a loan and get further in debt. We let them people trigger the, we're going we to compile it all together. Now you got bills that are going to last for maybe five or six years. When they pile it together, it's going to be like 15 years. And you say, oh, I'm doing good now. No, you're not. But if you believe his power have action, why don't you step out on what his word says? Why don't, why don't you do like we've been talking about giving? And, and, and Nah, I can't see that. Why? Because I don't believe. We have trouble with our belief. What about medical? I'm not saying don't, don't go to a physician, not to check. But when he says nothing you can do, your face drop to the floor. Nobody want to talk to you. Because guess what? You're whining about something that can be healed. And guess what? If, if the reason you, you're drooping and sad and, and drum down is because you don't believe. If you miss the foundation, guess what? Your house going to crumble. It don't matter how good it look on the top. If the foundation is bad, sooner or later, the rain's going to come and the wind's going to blow. And guess what? That foundation going to go down. We have a problem with believing. We have a problem with believing. We have a problem with trusting. He says the arm of the Lord is, good, is God's power in action. We say, and I've said, seeing is not believing. Seeing is not believing. And, and, and we, we have people that, that, that uh, well, if I see it, I'm going to believe it. No, you won't. Belief is an internal thing. Yes. And if you don't believe it on the inside, no matter how many times or things they show you, you're going, oh, yeah, okay, all right, okay, uh, and, and you're not going to believe. I'm going to show you a scripture for that. I'm going to show you a scripture for that. John 12, 37. I don't know if I, I gave it to uh, Deacon Brentley, but uh, he going, look, look, at, look at, you see that scripture there? Let's see what it says. He says, but though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. Read verse 38. That the saying of Isaiah, which is Isaiah, the prophet, might be fulfilled, which he spake, saying, speak, Lord, who hath believed our report, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? God can't show his power to you until you believe. He, he, he do miracles in front of you. And that's what John was saying. John said all the miracles he performed, they saw it, but they didn't believe it. Because you know, you, know you know what we say? And, 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 and this is going to be a little uncomfortable, but we're going to say it anyway. We, we say, I need you, but I don't want you. We, we, we live in a society where I'm needed, but I'm not wanted. You meet somebody. I'm just throwing this out parenthetically now. You meet somebody. How you doing? Doing good. Uh, can I get your name? Gas, light, water. <laughs> Rent. Yeah. Cable. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Could you know what? I need you, but I, but I don't want you. We can, we can get somebody, uh, 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 even married. They'll be married for 25 years. I need a house. I need a car. I need to be financially set. And when I get there, I, I don't think I love you anymore. <laughs> you need it, but you're not wanted. We have a tendency to get things from each other that we need, knowing that you don't want that, that, that person. And, and, and it, it causes a lot of problems because you say, oh, I, I need this. Oh, oh yeah, you, you going to buy that? Oh, yeah, you going you gonna to get this? Oh, yeah. And you get all what you need. And then all of a sudden you realize, I need you, but I don't want you. 
And that's the same thing we did with Christ. Lord, I'm sick. Can you heal me? You heal. Now we, oh, I'm busy right now, Lord. Oh, it's going to rain. I ain't going to church. I, I needed that call. You blessed me with it. I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it, Lord. I don't want it to get wet. It was on the parking lot. It been parked in the parking lot, rain on and everything else. But now that you own it, we can't bring it outside in the rain. What kind of foolishness is that? Well, my, well I, I, the storm coming, I want to be in my house. The storm knocked down houses too. Because you in it, you think, oh, no, no, my sister, my brother. They, just because you in it, you ain't going to keep that house. Lord, I need you, but I don't want you. I, I, I need you to come, I, I, I need you to come and, and, and fix this situation for me. The Lord fix it. You get a job. You bless. Oh, Lord, I got this job. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. I needed you. But the job said, you got to come on Sunday. Oh, well, Lord, you must have, you must have not wanted me not to come on church on Sunday because you gave me the job. No, he, he, he gave you a, an opportunity to say, where you going to stand, for me or against me? I gave it to you. Do you love me enough? Oh, no, Lord, I need you, but I don't want you. How many times we tell that to God? Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. Lord, I need you, but I don't want you. How many times we tell that to, to people we're affiliated with? I need you, but I don't want you. Whose report will you believe? Will you ever take an opportunity to see the power of God in action? You can't if you never believe. You never see, you never see a mighty move of God if you never believe. Because you see, God won't do nothing substantial in our lives without faith. You, 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 you tell somebody, oh, you know what? Uh, I, woke up this, I woke up this morning. They're going to say, okay. Well, yeah, a lot of people woke up. Well, what, what, what you doing for God? Huh? What, what I'm doing? What you mean what I'm doing? We get, we get confused. We get crossed up. Because you know why? We don't know what belief really is. Belief is believing God even though the circumstances don't look like it's going to come to pass. What, 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 what if Daniel had got in the line then then that line would have bit him? You think Daniel would have said, oh, wait, hold up, I'm, I'm going to bow down now? No, it didn't matter to Daniel. He said, I still believe. And I give you an example. The Hebrew boys did the same thing. He said, we're not going to bow down to you, but we're going to throw you in the fiery furnace. We're still not going to bow because our God can deliver us, but if he don't, we... We believe in him. Our confidence is in him. So it don't, it don't matter, live or die, we're going to be the Lord. But we have to have the belief in God in our heart and not just on our lips. That's why Isaiah said, I got to get my lips burned. Because you know what? It's on my lips, but I need it in my heart. And a lot of us have a lot of lip service. Get ready to do something. That, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. And you get there, there's three people. Because you know why? It's not in their heart. Right. But their lips will say, we could do this, and we should do that, and we should go here, and we should, and, and even if pastor get up and say, well, I got a vision. Yeah, pastor, let, let's go do it. Let's go do it. Well, we're going to need y'all to give. Oh, excuse me. No. We're coming out. Why? Because we don't believe. We have trouble with belief. Let's, let's, let, that, that, that's verse one. Well, let, let's go to verse two. Verse two, look what he said. He says, for he shall grow up before him. Now, we know that when he says the arm of the Lord is revealed, where does Christ say that? The right hand. That was Christ he was talking about. Isaiah's trying to get us to see that Christ is coming because of us, because of me. And he wants us to believe him. But he put the question before us, so we got a choice. He said, now let me tell you something about it. He's going to come up as a, a root. He come before him as a tender plant, a root out of dry ground. He has no form of commonness that we should see him. There is no beauty that we should desire him. And when we, we first read that, you know what we say? Boy, Christ must have been ugly. He, must have, he ain't had no beauty. What you call beauty? 
I don't, know, I don't know who wrote that, but somebody said, beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Some people can look at something and say, boy, that's so wonderful. That looks so nice. And you look at that and say, please. <laughs> and you know why I tell you that? Because if you believe in, when you believe in somebody and, and they look at them and you say, why is she married to him? And you know what she said? You don't see what I see in him. What, what, what Isaiah was, was telling us, he said, if you got the belief right, even though it don't look like Denzel Washington or, or, or Pee Wee Herman, whoever y'all, he said, that's, that's not important to him. He says, when he says there's no beauty that we should desire him, you, you ever been in a, in, in, with somebody that was different from you? Somebody that walk to the beat of a different drummer, somebody that didn't cut up like you cut up, didn't drink like you drink, and smoke like you smoke, and carry on like you carry on. When you see him, you say, oh, boy, he a party pooper. Coming to take the fun out of everything. There's no confidence that we should. They didn't desire Jesus. Because when, when sinful flesh stand next to pure righteousness, Oh man, that don't look good. That don't, that don't, it don't, it don't look good. Cause now I can actually see how dirty I, I, I really am. I can see how unclean. Let me, let me get back. Oh no, no, no. And there's no. I, I don't desire to be by him because he is so righteous. And look at me. And still, he gave me a choice to choose to believe him, that I can, I can become the righteousness of Christ through faith. Amen. But when they looked at him, and, and, and Pastor Tuttle, Pastor said, he came out of obscurity. No way. Judah? Judah was known for his kings, but not for his priests. No, no priests come out of Judah? Till he came. Till he came. And, 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 and it is, isn't it ironic that the greatest priests come out of a place where priests don't come from? And what he did for us was, was, was past awesome. And when we looked at him, what, what that, in that city, there was no beauty that we desired him. I don't desire to... When, when you're an when you alcoholic or... or Whatever, fornicator, adulterer. When you do, you don't like to be around nobody that's not like that. Because guess what they do? They show you. We was at my my granddaughter's birthday uh, party. She made sixteen, and we we was over there, and some of her friends was over there. Some, and we was the guys was we had a bot in the back cooking and stuff. There, we was back there talking. And one guy was just talking, and, and every now and then he, oh, no, this here. And he sent out another word. He sent out another word. And we, we just talked, we, oh, yeah. We, and and the, uh, the brother that the, the, went in the house, he came out, he said, hey, man, I know this. None of y'all don't curse. <laughs> so I see, well, there's a, we find that's a better way to express ourselves without using that. He said, oh, man, I'm, I'm, I've been trying yet. Because <laughs> guess what? All of a sudden, he felt guilty. Because, now, I, I, it, that, yes, your mouth, man, you want to do it. We, we not, I'm not, you're not going to entitle me to do it. But when he, when he recognized, he said, he said, man, I know y'all don't, y'all, none of y'all don't. No, we can express ourselves better without doing that. Amen. Oh, yeah, I've been, I've been trying. And I hope he succeeds. But when you get close to righteousness, when you get close to something that's opposite of you, guess what? It makes you uncomfortable. Yes, sir. You, get, you get uncomfortable. Well, I'm going over here to cut up, and everybody, they, well, let's pray. Oh, they're going to pray. Oh, man. We don't know how to change the atmosphere. And that's what Pastor was telling us a, a Sunday. We got, we got to be able to come in and change the atmosphere. Don't fall in line with what they do. Be a different. Plain and simple. Let's look at verse 3. Oh, yeah, time ticking, time ticking. We got, we, got to, we, got to, we got to deal with verse 3. Look what he said. 
And he, he is despised and rejected of men. That's us. A man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. We esteemed him not. That word esteem means to regard highly, to respect with admiration. We had no admir we had no admiration for him. Esteemed him not. But he was despised and rejected. Despised and rejected. Let's see what despised. To look down upon with disrespect. To regard as worthless. To regard as worthless. Can you imagine looking at <coughs> the Savior and say you're worthless? That's what we did. If you don't believe, if you don't believe in Christ, you know what you're saying? He's worthless. He has no value. I'm not going to receive him. Despised and rejected. How many of us ever felt rejected? You, you, let me, let me, let me, what I rejected. Dismissed as inadequate. Not received. Somebody look at you and say, you're not enough. They reject it. Now, it's, it's different when you're playing basketball and, and, and you don't make the team. You say, oh, rejected. You didn't make the, the pep squad, the cheerleaders, the baseball. Any of those things, you didn't make it. But what about rejection come closer? You grew up in a, in a house. Uh, father leave. Don't know who he is. And you reject it. You, re you reject it because somebody say, you was worthless. You're broken. You, 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 you're, not, you're not tall enough. You're not bright enough. Why can't you be like your sister? Why can't you be like your brother? Why can't you be like minister so-and-so? Why you can't be like Deacon Calvin? Rejection. When we get rejected, you know, you, you know what, we, what you say? You say, not only that you're inadequate, but there's something wrong with you. And when you reject a person, just like internally belief is, you start to make them disbelieve in themselves. And, 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 and we got a habit of, of rejecting people for little or nothing. You, you, you mess up one time with something. It can be something as simple as cooking. And we say, you, you're not smart enough to, to turn the stove on at the right temperature? You, 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 you're too inapt to fix the bed. You can't. We reject people for little or nothing. And what does that do to them? Oh, wait, wait. They're just going to be sad. They're going to they get over it. Mm. It makes them reduce their performance. <clears throat> if I try my best at something, if I give it all, and you tell me it's not good enough, guess what I'm going to do? I, ain't gonna, I, I quit trying then. How many of our kids, we deflated them because we, let them, we told them they was inadequate? Because they tried their best, and rather than encourage them, we rejected them. You never be nothing. You're never going to make it. You're always going to be at the bottom. Rejection. Isolation. When you get rejected, you know what you, what you want to be? I want to be by myself. Because if I'm by myself, guess what? I ain't got to hear how you really feel about me. Here we tell he was rejected. He, Christ offered us eternal life, 
and we told him no. He offered us salvation. We told him no. He, he, he showed us the way we should walk in the spirit. And we said no. Isolated. How many people have we isolated? How many people have we caused to do drugs, to drink, even think about committing suicide because of rejection? And we reject them sometimes because of our own selfishness. Well, I think I'm better than everybody else. And I put them under me. Rejection. We look at rejection and we put it off, but it's something we do every day. We look at people and say, if you can't do this for me when I want to, then you're not worth nothing. You inadequate. How many times do we do that? How many times? Who have we done it to? Can you think about somebody that you've offended in that way? You say, you know what? You can't be with us. You're not tall enough. You're not wise enough. You don't do the things we do. You don't talk the way we talk. You don't act the way we, we act. And, you, and we wonder why our kids are blowing up, have an a inner anger within them, because they've been rejected. They, they grew up. Daddy didn't want me. Mama didn't want me. I had to grow up like, so it's an anger and a bitterness in them. So when they see people, you know what? They're going to reject me too. But guess what? I'm going to reject them before they reject me. And we find ourselves in the valley of loneliness. I don't know, one, one singer wrote a song, I think it was Aretha Franklin some while, years back. She said, to be invisible would be her claim to fame. A person with no name, that way she wouldn't have to feel the pain. And that's what happened with, with rejection. We want to be invisible. If they don't see me, they can't hurt me. Rejection. And because of me, Christ was rejected. In Hebrews, I know I'm going ahead of my time, but Hebrews 4 and 15, if y'all if can pull that up. Look at this, say, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we were yet without sin. Christ went through everything that he knew we would have to go through being despised and rejected. Because you know what? He wanted to know just how we felt. The God of heaven comes down to get abused and he accepted because of me. And each one of us got to be able to say that what God, what Christ went through was because of me. He wanted to know how you, how you, how, how do you really act when you're hurt? Christ said, I'm going to hurt. How, how, how do we act when we get rejected? Now, I, I'm trying to think of a scripture where Christ was rejected and he just went off on them. What happens when somebody tells you no? What happens when they tell you not now? What happens that if, when they tell you to wait? Do you, do you feel that hot feeling in your neck and it's going up? And, you, you, you've experienced that? And Christ said, I experienced the same thing, but guess what? Love came out of my mouth. So, so you have to ask yourself, what, what, what comes out of your mouth when, when that thing gets hot right up in here and, and, your, and your heart beating fast? You can see your shirt moving. What comes out? Do you, do you do like Christ when he was on the cross? Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. No, not us. Say it again. I dare you. We, 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 we in the flesh and not in the spirit. But he did it because of me. And every time you read something in the Bible, every time you hear about the cross in Calvary, you got to say, you know what? He did this because of, of me. 
and we esteem him not. Let's look at verse 4. Surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrows. We did esteem him stricken. Oh, yeah, we say he was stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Yeah, we, we, we know that that's what happened. Now, this is some 700 years before Christ was going to go through this. And Isaiah is telling us exactly how we're going to act. Yes, sir. Exactly how. And when you read that, you think about it. You say, now, the Pharisees and the scribes had this, knowing what they said, and they still did it. They, and we do the same thing. How many of us got a Bible at our house? And how, how many of us did lie? And when they said, yeah, put your hand, y'all put your hand like that. that, that, that. <laughs> Because, you know, we, we, we know that. Don't lie. Don't. He gave us the command. He, he tells us all that. But you know what? We have it right here. And in certain situations in the Bible, you know, we just say, oh, if I was there, I wouldn't do. If, if I was in the wilderness and God parted the water and rained manna from him, oh, I never would have. I never would have did like them Hebrews did over there. Talking about what, they got leeks and melons in there. I, but look, look where you look. Actually, ask, ask spouse if you're married. Ask them if you, if, if you switch over. Because you know what? In this flesh dwelleth no good thing. Amen. And if you put confidence in it, oh, you're going to fall. It, it's going to trip you. If you put confidence in it, it, it will cause you to stumble. But you know what I like about that verse? That surely he has borne our grief. Surely. He acknowledged. Isaiah said, we got to acknowledge what he did for us. And, and, you know, that's, 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 that's why I say this, this is the guy. If you don't acknowledge it, guess what? You, you can't start. You, you, you got to acknowledge that you was a sinner. You got to acknowledge that I, I, I messed up. And he, they, he said, yeah, he was, he was a, it was because of us. He was smitten and struck and beat. But look what he said. He said, if, if, if that's the case, if that's the case, we got to think about this pain that he went through. Now, that, that, there's something different about pain. There's something, and, and, and I, I, I put it on the, I Google it on, on, my, on my phone. I'm trying to learn how to do that. It says, uh, let's read, let's go back. Let's read Psalms 118 and 22. I want to show you all something about pain. Psalms 118 and 22. Ben, if you can, if you can get that. Because it's, it's something we got we to gotta only say. God, he said, God is, God is the Lord, which has shown us light. Bind the sacrifices with the cords. No, not, not 27. It's supposed to be 22. 22. I'm finna say, I, I'm reading that. Yeah, that's what, The stone which the builders refused to become the head corner stone. Rejected, despised, and we got, he became the, the head corner stone. Isaiah 28 and 16. Go to that one. Therefore, thus said the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make it. You, you, you're not going to mess up if you, if, if you believe. Now, he said he was the cornerstone after rejection. When I read my, that, that passage in, in psychology, you know what it says? It says that the mind can't tell the difference. When we're talking about rejection, the mind can't tell the difference between a broken arm and a broken heart. It can't, it can't tell the difference. You cry just as much from a broken heart as you do from a broken arm. And, and when we address people with that, you know what we tell a broken arm? What you gonna tell them? Oh, we are gonna take it to the doctor. I understand. Oh, that we gonna get it fixed. We are gonna get it, man. When a broken heart, you know what we tell them? Oh, get over it. That, that, get over, get over. Yeah. Oh, he broke your. Oh, get over it. And we never understand how rejection felt. When somebody's heart is broken, it's just as though they broke their arm. And how many of us would have a child with a broken arm or a friend with a broken arm and say, get over it? The thing hanging sideways. It, it. No, we wouldn't do that. But the heart, we have, we have no regard for it. No regard for a broken heart. No regard at all. We look at people and say, get over it. They got more fish in the sea. 
They got another one. They, they, she ain't the only woman. He ain't the only man. Get you another one. Move on. Wipe them tears. What you crying about? But you don't understand a broken heart. Let's do acknowledgement. We coming to the info, four, verse four, verse five. Four. Let's do four. Yeah, we on four. He cared. After he acknowledged what he did, after he esteemed him, we get to a part in our in, in this in this passage. You know what we say? This is the part we love. In verse five, he was wounded for our transgressions. Oh, glory! He was he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. That's the shouting verse there. That, that's, where, that's where the old Baptist preacher would, would, would close the book. They, 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 they close the book. Do you know him now? He, he was bruised, but that's pain. He was bruised for our trans. How many of y'all ever had a bike and fell off it? You didn't break them, but it scratched all the skin off them. Bruise, that, that bruise is a painful thing. He was bruised, he was wounded for our transgression and bruised for our iniquity because of me. Whether it was good or bad, when you look at it, he said, what, 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 what he did for our peace and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. He had to be chastised just for us to have peace. Yes, sir. Because of me. He, God loved me enough so much, he said, I want you to have peace, so I'm going to take the chastisement for you. Yes, sir. He said, I want you to have, what's the, what's the, the he said, I want you to, to be healed, so I'm going to take the stripes for you. I'm going to take a beating so you be healed. Now, let, let me throw something out now. now just, just me, don't, 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 y'all don't write this down. If I took all of that and did all that, you think I'm going to give you a choice whether or not you be saved? You saved, you're going to be saved. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you, without a tip, you're going to be saved. We're we, we not going to even play. We're not going to, oh, no. You gonna, I'm going to be beaten, bruised, rejected, despised, beaten till I was unrecognizable. And then Christ say, I put before you life and death. Choose life. You choose. No, you ain't choosing. <laughs> now, that's just me now. That's just me. I done went through all of that. I don't, I don't, and y'all, y'all do the same thing. Those of us who have kids and children, how many times, oh yeah, you eating it. I bought that, you, you eat, you wearing it. I, I, I paid for it, you, you gonna wear it. We, we, we don't, we don't give them no choice. Oh no, oh no. You doing, this my house. Yeah, oh yeah, you gonna clean, you going we, we don't give them no, and we ain't share no, no, no whipping, no bruising, no, but you know, we don't give them a choice. But a God that loved us so much took all of that and said, you know what? I'm still not going to make you do it. Take a choice. I want you to believe. I want you, I want you, if you, if you, if you want me, I want you. And, and I, I, I wanted to, to uh, get a, 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 a picture of parallel lines. Y'all, how many of y'all had geometry in, in school? Y'all had geometry? Well, it, it, I'm going to give you the simple part of geometry. One thing about geometry, they tell you. They say, uh, uh, brothers, y'all can come up because I'm finna, I'm finna go sit down. You know, y'all, y'all. One thing I tell you about geometry. Geometry tells you that parallel lines never intersect. What my teacher said, parallel lines never intersect. If they go to what they say, infinity, they're not going to intersect. Parallel lines, they're not going to intersect. You got to understand, Christ paid everything for us, took it all, and still gave us a choice. Our sin and our Savior, our sin is running like this, and the love of our Savior is running like this, side by side, and they want to say. Why? Because this is sin. And God said he, he, he can't behold sin. He, he, I don't know. He, that, that sin is it's going it's to be there. The love of God is running this close. It's right there. Two parallel lines running. Running. And we can't. We can't intersect. 
Romans, Romans 6 and 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 6 and 8. What it says? For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. In due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet preadventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. Sinful man and a loving God running side by side. Parallel lines and never intersect. Geometrically, mathematically, they're not going to meet. They're going to run like this. It's going to stay side by side. We lost in sin, and he loved enough to die for our sin. And we run in side by side. And what did he say? Salvation is in your mouth. Yeah, it's nigh to you. You got to be able to open your mouth. Amen. Well, if I open my mouth, what I'm going to say? I'm going to say, Lord, I'm a, I'm a sinner. I sinned. I messed up. I can, I can see God's goodness on this side, and God can see my sin right here. And he, God has done everything he could. Gave his son that I might be saved, and I'm still running parallel with him. And we came to say, Minister Bright, it's a problem because we're parallel and nothing we can do, no matter how far we go, we'll never intersect. But if I admit that I'm a sinner, if I admit that I've lied, I've stole, I've done wrong, if I admit those things, am I saved? I look and we still apart. I guess what I'll, I'll, I'll do, I'll, I'll believe. I believe what he said. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer the question that Isaiah, who shall believe, who shall believe our report? I'm going to believe it. I'm going to believe the report that he died on the cross and he saved. And spiritually, when I, I, when I, when I do that, I've confessed with my mouth. And those two parallel lines, layer lines that are running, guess what? They never go intersect. God on this side, I'm on this side, but Christ stretched out his hand and said, I'm going to be in the middle. The lines never intersect. The sin never came to God, but Jesus said, I stood in the gap for him. And when God looked, he said, I see the righteousness of my son. And I don't see a sinner no more. Because Christ kept his arms out on that cross and died for us. He made those lines. They didn't intersect, they connected. And after they connected, God didn't see two lines anymore. All he saw was his son. That's why he said, every scripture you read in Romans, they say, through Christ Jesus, by Christ Jesus, because of Christ Jesus. Because you know what? We was on a road to destruction and Christ put out his hand and he caught me at Calvary. That's why the songwriter says, it's at the cross where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I'm happy all the day. God bless you. If you don't mind, you repeat after me, Father. I believe. I believe enough to admit that I'm a sinner. I believe enough to admit I went against your word. But Lord, I believe that your son died for me because of me. I, now I live because of him. Lord, I confess in my heart that Christ died for me. And he sits on the right hand of power, interceding for me. I thank him for intercepting me on the road to destruction. Now, Lord, use me in your service the way you choose. And I'll be ever so thankful to give you the glory. 
Jesus' name. Amen. Love y'all. Be blessed. As we depart, I pray God blessing upon you that he would keep you, guide you, lead your home safe, bless you every step of the way. In Jesus' name, amen.